Good morning. I'm back again. We're still over in, in 2 Timothy in chapter 2, talking about being a soldier for Christ. And uh, yesterday we talked about uh, in verse 11 and, and verse 12 there in chapter 2, uh, about being dead with Him, and we know we're going to live with Him. So if, I, if I'm dead in Christ here, then I'm going to be living with Him in eternity. And so that, 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 to have that understanding, I'm going to be talking about uh, probably the first couple of days next week, I'm going to be talking about hope. And uh, the hope is confidence, and we'll get more into that. But we can have such assurance. Listen, you can have such assurance of where you're going to spend eternity when you put your faith and trust in Christ because of what the Bible says. God has guaranteed you and I eternal life. That means we'll never die spiritually. We'll never be separated from Him. We'll leave this physical body and have a glorified body forever and ever and ever. So as a soldier of Christ on earth, I have that to look forward to. So I go ahead and see that in verse 12, if we suffer, we shall also reign with Him, which is right here. If I suffer today, if I suffer on earth, I'm going to reign with Him in glory. Okay, so we got those two things going. Then we talked about if we deny Him, I heal deny us. If you reject Christ, if you reject the work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, shedding His blood for your sin, if you reject that, He rejects you. It's that simple. And, and it's not that He's being mean or nasty. You're the one that's making the decision. He says, I'm standing there. If you will come to me, I'll know why I turn you away. But he says, if, you, if you're going to reject me, I am not going to force myself on you. And so those that uh, deny him are those that are not Christian. They're not, they're not born again. They're not born into the family of God. So I'm going down to verse number 13. He talks about that. He says, uh, if we uh, believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. So what's, what's he telling me there? Well, the word believe there, if we believe not, in other words, if we, we're not faithful. So what, what does it mean to be faithful? What, what are we looking at to be faithful? Well, if I'm going to be faithful, that means that I, I am a Christian, okay? I'm a Christian, so to be faithful, I'm going to be faithful to live out the, God's Word in my life. I'm going to live it out as a Christian. I'm going to be a servant, a bond servant, a willing servant, and I'm going to be faithful to do what Christ wants me to do, what the Holy Spirit guides me to do, what the Word of God tells me to do. I'm going to be faithful to do that. And so that's what he's telling me. So, so if, my, if my faith fails, you know... Um, if you're familiar with that little uh, prayer that uh, the disciples say, you know, teach us to pray. And uh, he says, uh, lead us not into temptation, you know. And uh, that has the idea that w the fear of failing, the fear of uh, not keeping the faith, not living up to it. It's not that you're going to lose your salvation or anything else, but you're not going to live up to keeping the faith to doing what you should. So I don't want to be put in a position, in that little prayer, what I'm saying, I don't want to be put in a position that I can fail. Uh, did you ever... Uh, this, you're challenged with the, making the decision. Okay, you you got to make a decision on what you're going to do. And you know, this is what God would have you to do. This is what a faithful servant of God would do. And this is what someone that's been influenced and been drawn by sin in the world. And you make the wrong decision. And you you make that decision, and this this maybe just a moments later, you realize what you've done and how bad you feel. You know, you just hear terrible, and maybe it's something you can't change. Maybe you, you, you reacted to a situation in a certain way, or you said something a certain thing at a certain time, and you can't change it. And so how bad you feel, and we know we can go and ask forgiveness for it, and God's faithful to forgiveness because we don't want to do it anymore. But So he says here, if, if I fail, if my faith fails, if we believe not, yet he abides faithful. See, the good news is he has promised that he's going to love me unconditionally forever. Okay, he tells us over in Hebrews 13, 5, what's he say? He talks about not being covetous in the first part of that verse, and he says, I, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'll never abandon you. I'll never leave you behind, is what he's saying. And so I have that understanding. I have that security. And so even when I don't live up to my, uh, what my calling, live up to who I'm supposed to be, he does not disown me. He doesn't say, well, if you're not going to do it, I'm no longer responsible for you. Uh, you're on your own. No, he doesn't do that. He says, yet he abideth faithful. Why? Because he cannot be unfaithful himself. He cannot reject his faithfulness because I don't live up to my part. And you know, that's if we want to just kind of take that into the, the world today, so many times people get involved with those kind of things. Well, if you're not going to do your part, I'm not going to do my part. We see that sometimes in churches. We see it sometimes in marriages, in different relationships. And, and they say, you know, if, if you're not going to do what you're supposed to do, then I'm not going to do what I'm supposed to do. Well, and that's not the right attitude. And so Christ gives us the example, doesn't he? 
He says, no matter if you you failed in your your test, okay, the the the, the trial came and you didn't do what you should do. You didn't respond in the right way. Leave me not in temptation. He's not te tempting you to sin. He's giving you opportunity not to sin. And you fail. And you say, even when I do that, guess what? He still loves me. His love is unconditional. He's more than willing to forgive me. What I have done when I do that, I, I've damaged my, my fellowship with him. I don't have the fellowship that I should have, but I'm still his son. In my own case, I'm still his son. He still loves me, and he's ready to forgive me if I'll just turn from that and turn to him. So when I think about all this put together, what I'm saying is that he is faithful to do what he said he's going to do, even when I fail to do what I'm supposed to do. Because you know what? I'm, I'm still in the flesh. I'm still I'm going through the sanctification process. And I'm getting waiting to get to that time to when I'll be fully sanctified when I leave this old world. But until then, from the day that I got saved, my salvation was secured and complete. From that day on, all the way through now, I'm still growing in my faith. I'm still getting prayerfully getting stronger. I think being more mature in the faith. And if we study the Word of God and understand what God's trying to tell us so that we can face these challenges in life. So when you when you fall short, don't let yourself get beat up. Don't sit there and say, boy, I, I blew it, I wish I would have did. That's fine. Recognize our sin. Confess our sin before Him. He's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse ourselves. And so what we need to do, we need to forgive ourselves. Put it behind us and say, you know what? Tomorrow I'm going to do better than I did today. The next time I have a chance to witness, the next time I have this, a chance to show the love of Christ to someone, I'm going to show that love. And so when we do those things, then we'll be that soldier of Christ that, uh, that we need to be. So just look at your own life. What kind of life are you living for Christ? Are you faithful? Are you striving to be faithful? Sometimes we get caught up in sin and some people don't want to, aren't striving to be faithful, don't want to live according to the Word of God. They're going to want to put it to the side or maybe kind of ignore it a little bit. And so we know, but one thing is true, you don't lose your salvation. You don't get kicked out of the family. He said he's still faithful to do what he's supposed to do. Are you saved? If you're saved today, then you know what I'm talking about. If you're not saved, let this be the day. You need to let this be the day that you turn from the world. That you turn from the world, turn and put your faith and trust in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, we're all sinners. We're all condemned in our sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. There's none that doeth good, no, not one. For all of sin to come short of the glory of God. All those verses are in the third chapter and the sixth chapter of, of uh, Romans. So we know that we're all lost. That's the way we're born. We're born in a lost condition. But we need to repent. We need to understand that we are a sinner condemned in our sin. And what I need to do then is repent, turn to God, and put my faith and trust in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, He paid the price that I don't have to be condemned in my sin. Yeah, there could be. Listen, that doesn't mean that your just your sins are all covered. They're forgiven, but that doesn't mean there's no consequences to sin. It's because we have liberty in Christ doesn't mean that we can just do what we want to. No, when you truly confess Christ as your Savior, you're going to be that new creature. Talked about this some time ago, that uh, when you're that new creature, now you walk in newness of life. You walk different than the world, okay? You don't walk like you did before. So there's got to be the change. People have got to see the change. And you've got to feel the change. If you have a change of heart, you're going to feel the change. So let this be the day, let this be the hour, excuse me, that you change your eternal destiny. Your eternal destiny, you can shun hell and have a home in heaven where it's going to be beautiful, wonderful, everything's going to be great. You, you think things are nice in this world from time to time. We look at the surrounding area around us, the colors and the fall and all the beautiful things. It's pales. It is horrible compared to what it's going to look like in heaven because this world is a sin-cursed world. So let this be the day. And for you and I as Christians, let's show the joy of Christ in our life. Let us show an appreciation for what we have in Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day and for this time. We pray you would be with each one of us as we walk this pathway of life, that we would be found faithful to serve and honor you in a way that brings honor and glory to Jesus. We praise you for what you've done and for what you're going to do. For praying in Jesus' name, amen.